Hey, it's me, Editing Room Ethan, coming at you at the top of this episode. Um, there's a few things that I need to address before we dive on in. Um, I've gotten some comments from listeners over the past few days, um, and uh, some of our listeners aren't familiar with how Patreon works, so I'm here to explain. So basically, Patreon is a way for you to contribute to the growth of this podcast on a monthly basis financially. Uh, there are various tiers with various other um, rewards that I have set up. And so I'm going to explain what those are. At the $1 level, you have uh, just my re love and respect. Um, at the $5 level, you get access to the Discord server, which is... Uh, Discord is a... It's an online chat room where you can chat with a bunch of different people from a bunch of different places, and based on my experience with it, I would highly recommend using it. Uh, at the $10 tier, you have access to episodes the day before they're released and unedited, so if you want to hear all the awkward silences, go for that. And at the $20 tier, that is where the bonus content starts to come in. Um, like I talked about with Rachel, uh, the audio drama content. So be on the lookout for that in the near future. So without further ado, let's jump in. Hello, my name is Ethan Hewlin. Like you, I live in a world that never stops moving. Also like you, I have stories. These are my stories. The true stories of a tryhard. Welcome back to True Stories of a Tryhard. I am Ethan Hewlin, and this week I'm bringing on yet another podcasting friend of mine and also another local podcasting friend. Please welcome Sydney King of Some Reading Required. Sydney, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me today. So, listeners, Sydney and I are going to be discussing uh, portrayals of mental health in fiction. Um, Sydney is a big bookworm, probably one of the biggest that I know. And her podcast, Some Reading Required, talks about all the books that we read in high school. And I was actually on episode two of that very podcast. So whenever you're done listening to this, please go check that out. Show her some love. So, Sydney, to get things started, what, uh, what are some of the books that you have seen mental health represented the best? I would say the best represent representation I've seen is actually in the young adult I think the young adult genre and just that medium, those authors are trying the hardest to make sure there's representation for everyone. So that is expanding past just race. So like I was able to go to my bookshelves and pull minimum three books. And I bet if I spent more than 10 minutes working on it, even more, that I knew mental health was at least part of it. So like probably like the biggest one that most people probably know about is John Green's Turtles All the Way Down. I, I personally have not read Turtles All the Way Down, but I have read uh, some of his other books. I read Looking for Alaska and I've read The Fault in Our Stars. So I can see where that opinion would be. Um, would be founded on in the young adult genre for mental health portrayal and why do you think that's that's so important in especially in that particular area of literature i think the authors are trying in the young adult genre because that's where it's the most formative young adult is read by so many ages because young adult the young adult area pertains to the age of the protagonist not the age of the reader so it could be read as young as like a 13 year old i wouldn't be surprised of them picking up john green books they might not understand it as much but i know like i mean i was reading young adult in junior high 
and I'm still reading it today at 26. So I think young it's so important for young adult to have the good representation because with it hitting so such a wide variety of readers, it's then helping shape the next generations as well as also maybe helping influence the current ones that maybe need a kick in the pants. I would definitely agree with that because I feel like sometimes there are certain stereotypes that people can attach to certain conditions and those can just get extrapolated way out of proportion. Like you see someone who um, who is written as having Tourette's and they are like furiously blinking and not being able to control their speech. It's like, yes, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, and we even see that in like reality shows. I remember there was a season of Survivor recently where I think it only came up in like one episode, one or two episodes that one of the people had Tourette's. But it wasn't like super obvious the rest of the time until she pointed it out that she had those ticks. Because that we just still saw her as a challenger. That's why I think it's so important for these things to be portrayed as accurately as possible. Because, you know, if you meet someone who uh, who says that they have, that they are a certain way, like, uh, I mean, in my particular case, I have general anxiety disorder and people's opinions can be misconstrued by things they consume so besides john green what authors do you think best um best portray uh, these conditions accurately um the first one that really comes to mind is francesca zappia she only has a few books out But her very first one, Made You Up, is literally about a girl with, I believe it's schizophrenia. So, like, we know that she kind of has different, like, the biggest thing is that she has difficulty remembering what's reality and what's hallucinations. And it's just kind of more about, like, her in high school dealing with it as well as everything else in life. And, like, how she deals with her schizophrenia of being able to tell the difference is she takes pictures. Because then she has that physical evidence of what's real. So this is actually uh, Francesca's debut novel, even. So that's what I think is really interesting, that she didn't just write a generic YA novel. She decided to tackle something like schizophrenia. I remember reading this probably... Let's see if I can find the date early 2018 so it's been almost two years but I know I enjoyed it with how she did the portrayal it has some heavy areas probably because I've never encountered that type of mental illness before but it was definitely something I enjoyed reading yeah and and schizophrenia I think is a very it's very interesting yet somewhat morbid area of um, mental illness because we don't really know anything about it because the people who have it in and of themselves are unreliable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of the Goodreads reviews, they're going, I'm not sure if this is accurately portrayed because I've never encountered this. We can only hope that the author either has experience with it or has done the research ahead of time. But it's definitely, I do remember like she had to take medications and that there was things that her parents were afraid to tell her about because she had such a hard grasp on thinking this was reality that how do you tell this person that, no, that's been a long hallucination, like years long. Wow. See, for me, Another good example of what comes to mind is, ironically, a book I read in high school for my junior English class. 
uh, The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien has a pretty accurate portrayal of PTSD and what it can do to, well, to soldiers in this particular, in that particular case. Yeah, I think PTSD is another one of those big ones that it's so different in every person. Oh, what was it? I just... Oh, it was the musical I just saw, Bandstand. Like, there was so many different ways that these boys were coping with being home from the war. Because it's about, like, right after World War II, this guy who was, like, musically inclined um, starting a band of all veterans that had just come home from the war. Interesting. And what I was seeing reviews of this musical, it was all about like, yeah, it was, it had such great representation because they all had reacted differently. How like one person drinks, one is just trying to forget it. Like one's now unrecognizable to his family because of how he acts now. Within the things they carried, it's very, very similar because, um, they talk about all the different members of his, um, of the the lead character's um, unit and how they all dealt with it. Like, there's a um, particular character that comes to mind, a guy named uh, Norman, I think is his name. And he, like, he symbolically... Um, drives himself insane because he drives his car around this lake uh, like a bunch of times and eventually just often commits suicide because he just can't deal with it anymore. I feel like I, now that I think about it, there's a lot of musicals that are kind of around war or history. If I just think of like South Pacific and... Mm-hmm. Sound of Music, kind of, and Bandstand. But Bandstand is probably the biggest one I can think of. Yeah. Because, like, one of the guys literally just starts drinking and trying to pretend everything's okay. He's got a very... I'm trying to think of the best way to describe his attitude. Because it's kind of just like, no, I'm going to keep drinking to keep the nightmares away. Mm. Like, literally the last song that um because there's one main female character and she's a widow of someone that like died in battle Mm -hmm. so she kind of ends up being like the female singer of this group she literally writes this first it's a poem about all of the boys that she has like because she's getting to know all six of these guys literally this final song is called welcome home but it's literally touching on each of these things and she's like there's nothing i can do i just stand here helpless wishing i could help you and it literally details like what each of them is going through mm-hmm. Man, it's, I... al- it's honestly actually my favorite song from the entire album and the entire musical really yeah i don't know why it's just as soon as like because they when she writes it in the musical they're trying to win a competition, so they're like, no, you need to change this to make it sound more like a wife welcoming her soldier home. So they changed the words, but as soon as I had heard them saying the chorus of, welcome home, my boys, welcome home, my sons, welcome home, my husband, welcome home, my love, and I was like, nope, this one's going to be, no, no, go back to the original. I don't want your rewrite to win a contest. Right. And then they sing it in the finale, and I'm like, yep, I love this. Because it is like, she's like, this person is having to deal with it this way. This person is now fighting the unjust by like studying law because of what he saw. And it's just, it was really powerful. So you think Bandstand did a really good job of just portraying how different people react to that sort of thing? Definitely, because you see these little instances, and then there is at one point where they're all freaking out because of some rule they were told, and you just hear like like a door slam, and you see all six of them who are all just standing in random places twitch. 
Wow. So like you can tell like part of them are still like it's still affecting them. Right. And I know like some people have like signs in their yard around like 4th of July or New Year's, which is coming up here in a few days as of recording, um, where it says like, keep fireworks away or something like that. Like this is the home of a United States veteran because like that's really triggering for them because, you know, they're trained to react to explosions and that's what those are. Like, uh, my stepdad was in the army for 15 years, I want to say. And why, well, I mean, while he never saw combat, he definitely knew people who, um, who came back or, um, yeah, who came back from Iraq or Afghanistan or, something along or somewhere around there and just how shell-shocked they were at the stuff that they had seen yeah i just i can't even imagine and i don't think any of us that just go about our daily lives can i mean the only real way to know is to have somebody tell you Mm mm-hmm So you had a couple of other books that you wanted to talk about with their portrayal of various mental health concerns. Yeah. So one of the other ones that I read this in a sitting, like I started it and next thing I knew I had finished this book. Wow. Yeah. It's called Queens of Geeks or Queens of Geek by Jen Wild. It's, by this kind of like small publisher called swoon reads so it's kind of like people submit their stories and then people other like then people vote on like yes publish this one and then here let's vote on the cover it's a very interesting publication company but this one like the tagline is three friends two love stories one convention so it all takes place at like a fictionalized san diego comic-con But one of the main characters, Taylor, is literally... Oh, where was it? It literally, like, talks about what she has. It's autistic Asperger's with major social anxiety. I believe that's Taylor. It's either Taylor or Jamie. One of the two. I think it's Jamie, actually. Taylor's the guy. But... It's really interesting. It was just really interesting because, like, she's one of the main people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because literally, like, even in the, just on the back blurb, it talks about how her brain is wired differently, making her fear change. But it doesn't stop her from doing things. Yeah. It's like, she just, like, she already understands, like, what is different about her and it also has been a good long time since i've read this too i'm like reading my review that i found on gertie it's going okay why did i like (laughs) yeah again uh, apparently it was this year i read this weird no wait that's when i shelf changed my shelves yeah i read this in 2017 okay so it's definitely been a few years but she's she was going into this convention as like taking a stepping off point I'm trying to remember now. I, it's like, I remember loving this story. And I knew that it wasn't just like handling anxiety, but also her other things of the autism and having Asperger's. Like, but it wasn't making her see seem less. Right. Like her best friend is an actress and promoting a movie. And that's why they're at this convention. Mm-hmm. But her best friend was supportive and loved her and was never going to see her as less yeah and that's what i think is really important is with people who are affected by these various things you need to embrace them as people whereas like sometimes we see 
these people who have um, either the same um, the same condition to a worse extent or just a worse mental health condition than us as I wouldn't say animals, but they're not human. If that, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But I mean, cause that's just how I think pop culture in the past portrayed it. Yeah. And I feel like nowadays we are coming around to embracing that in general. It's a slow process, yes, but we are a lot farther along than we were with embracing these people as being people. Like my sister, for instance... She has ADHD and is on the autism spectrum. She's still my sister. She's still a quiet, compassionate, kind person. But some people, especially at school, just avoid her because they think that just because there's something wrong in her head means there's something wrong with her in general. People suck sometimes. (laughs) Amen. Yeah, and just, I think what I love about these stories, at least the ones I have found, is that people agree that it's good portrayal and that it's A, not in your face, and that it's, like, it's not just a good portrayal, but it's believable. Mm-hmm. They've not gone over the top. Yeah. And, and it, I, feel like, I feel like that's what's been done more than anything else, is they go, the royal they, meaning people who are writing these things, are going over the top with how with how the, these, uh, these various things are portrayed. So they take the worst aspects and just bring them to the front of everyone's consciousness and they and they say oh this is what this person is like yeah or it's defining them as that trait which yeah. i think is when like you get to like that far side of parodies mm, mm-hmm. yeah almost like i mean i enjoyed big bang theory growing up and i know some people didn't probably because it was more of a comedic portrayal of a lot of things, or they just never came out, came out and specifically defined as anyone as any specific thing. Yeah. We just thought Sheldon was super quirky. Yeah. But the problem is that then we don't have good portrayal. Mm -hmm. But then I, now I just, this, this suddenly came to mind. It was an old Tumblr post. I remember seeing randomly. It was, how it was about Drax and how he's actually a really good representation. I do not remember what kind of representation it was, but it was because metaphors and similes go over his head Mm -hmm. that someone was able to look at him and go, oh, he's like me. He doesn't get that. And it might even just been autism. I don't remember. That's definitely possible. Um oh okay i think i found it um yeah it's autism it's like we don't like other people we just kind of find drax is a quirky side character but it's so great that like they didn't see him really as less they saw him as weird and yeah. it's also been all since i've seen guardians it's been a couple of years for me but even just like in Infinity War, they had to, they still included him in everything. Yeah. They didn't say, you can't be on this because you don't get metaphors. I mean, ha, all of the Guardians are quirky and really we don't, why are we trusting the universe to the Guardians of the Galaxy? It's amazing that the galaxy still was living. Right. I think in the I hands felt- of Chris Pratt and a raccoon. 
Chris Pratt, a raccoon, a CGI tree, green Zoe Saldana, and this guy. Drax. <laughs> but it's great that then in superhero movies, we have this character for those little kids to see. Yeah. Because we don't just need Black, the Black Panthers and Captain Marvels. We need more like Drax. I mean, not to say that those aren't important because they definitely are. But, I mean, just representation as a whole, proper representation of these mental conditions needs to be more, um, it needs to be more of a concern when people are writing these things. And I think I actually found that Tumblr post that you were talking about. He says, I took my little brother who falls on the autism spectrum to see Guardians of the Galaxy, and he lit up like a Christmas tree and screamed, he's like me, he can't do metaphors. And for the rest of the film, yeah. my brother stared at Drax in a state of rapture. Yeah, that was it. It's like, this is why we need the representation. I'm trying to think now I'm looking. I, just, I see this bookmark that has the cover of one of these sci-fi books. And mm-hmm. it's got some real weird characters. But I don't know if any of them are mentally ill. Some, I think one of them is more like Sherlock, where she's like a high-functioning sociopath, practically. Because even, like, Sherlock has, I think John has um, PTSD, doesn't he? Watson? He does. Yeah, Watson has PTSD, and Sherlock has, and Sherlock is a sociopath, so. That's, it's like, Sherlock uh, is Sherlock. Yeah. I mean, even now, I'm, like, just, like, looking at my bookcase. Like, mocking Jay. I know some people talk about how Katniss kind of, she has her own version of PTSD. And I want to say maybe depression. Or maybe she was like clinically, someone thought she was clinically insane. I think all three of those are a possibility. Because of just how she reacts to things after both Hunger Games and having to repeat those few things to herself. Of Mm -hmm. like, my name is Katniss. I lived in District 12. The Capitol destroyed it. I don't even remember what her little, like having that, um, that little monologue she had to tell herself. So we've slowly been getting more representation because even now I'm thinking about it, Finnick had it. Like Finnick was having issues and like how they needed to like tie the knots to make themselves calm down. And like that came out years ago. When did Mockingjay come out? What was it? Like 2012? I want to say 2012. I want to say 2012. It was 11 or 12, because I think it was 2009 when Catching Fire came out. Because I discovered that series my sophomore year, and I found Catching Fire like a month after it had released, and it was still the fall semester. That's how I know it was 2009. 2010 was when Mockingjay was released. Dang. So all three of them are almost 10 years old. No wonder they're doing all this big stuff. Yeah, I feel old now. That means Ballad is a full 10 years after Mockingjay. Crap. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for that book. I'm like looking at... I'm just like looking at my bookshelf going, what else is there? Yeah, unfortunately it cannot stay untitled Pan Am novel as some of our... um, fellow podcasters once thought i like the title no i do too and i called people out when i talked about it on my first episode i was like excuse you this is a great title it fits young adult (laughs) genre right now i would say that's true like a blank of blank and blank is literally like a recipe right now yeah there's an entire sarah j mass series that do that it's a court of throne and roses a court of mist and fury and i don't remember because i didn't read the rest i didn't like one of the main characters it's a a blank of blank and blank right yeah it was a court of blank and blank that was that entire series but now that i think about it i think i didn't read this book now i have to find this because i know everyone talked about how Feyre went through things and a court of mist and fury covers that interesting and i think 
I mean, I don't know why I'm trying to find the reviews because all it's going to be is about people being in love with that stupid character that I didn't like. Got him. Oh, yeah, it's PTSD. That's what it is. Because she, the main female character, who's really the main character of the series, she goes through this huge trial at the end of the first book. And she, I mean, I think it even, like, people are saying, like, she's utterly broken at the beginning of book two. And that she goes through yeah. serious, like, panic attacks and anxiety because of her PTSD. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it was that she went through. I just saw, or what it was, like, she was having to portray. I just knew people were in love with this book. Yeah. But I then never read it. Because the guy that becomes the love interest, I couldn't stand in book one. Yikes. And when I saw people making, like, shrines to this guy, I was like, hard pass. <laughs> Y'all need some new priorities. I have favorite characters, but I don't build shrines to these people. Yeah, that's a whole different level of obsession. Yeah, it also, I wouldn't say ruins the name Rysand, but it definitely doesn't help when there's other characters with at least part of their name. I wouldn't think. Well, Sydney, um, is there... Anything else you would like to bring up in the world of books and their portrayal of mental health? None that I can think of off the top of my head or as I scan all of my bookshelves. Is there anything you would like to say to the tryhards who are listening right now? The representation is out there and you are seen. It may just sometimes be harder to find, but you are seen, and I know you are loved. Thank you, Sydney. And thank you, listeners, for once again listening to True Stories of a Tryhard. You can find me on Instagram at ethan.t.hewlin. You can find me on Twitter at etphonehome. Those are zeros and the e's are threes. Um, you can find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at True Stories Pod. Um, this is the first time I'm going to ask you to do this. Uh, please feel free to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or wherever you can leave reviews, because if you do, you'll get a shout out at the beginning of the episode. So I would love for you to rate me five stars so we can get more people to listen. Uh, Sydney, where can we find you? So you can find me on my podcast, Some Reading Required, that goes up every other Friday, wherever you get podcasts. I'm on Instagram and Twitter via the podcast at Some Reading Pod, or you can interact with me personally through my Instagram and Twitter, Books of Kings. I'll be back with more stories next week. So until then, this is Ethan Hewlin and Sydney King signing off.